What's up, everybody? Matthew here. Thank you so much for checking into the YouTube channel. Absolutely unbelievable news coming out of the PC USA. That is the mainline Presbyterian Church USA. Now, let's just clarify our alphabet soup here. The PC USA is the liberal progressive behemoth denomination. It's the largest Presbyterian denomination, but please, please, please do not confuse it with conservative Bible-believing denominations like the PCA. That's my denomination, the Presbyterian Church in America. We're smaller, but we're growing much faster. In fact, the PCUSA, the liberal behemoth, is in massive, massive free fall decline. And this church, the PCUSA, is what I would call a pino church, Presbyterian in name only. They should really drop the word Presbyterian in their title, the PCUSA, because they have nothing to do with historic conservative, confessional, Bible-believing Presbyterianism. It is one of the most egregious examples of liberalism gone awry, probably second only to the UCC, the United Church of Christ, and maybe some branches of the ECUSA, the Episcopal Church USA. These churches have long since jettisoned biblical Christianity, but today there is some breaking news, or actually I should say yesterday or the day before, that the PCUSA is now bent on compelling compelling by force queerism in their churches. The PCUSA has a proposal going forward at this year's General Assembly that is going to force all future ordinands, that would be pastors, that would be elders, that would be deacons, to essentially bow the knee and to acknowledge queerism as part of the uh, Book of Orders constitutional requirements in order to be ordained. Now, we're going to look at an article here in just a moment. Before we do that, let me bury the lead here for just a second. I want to give you a real quick bit of news here. My book, A Theology of Joy, Eternal Happiness in the Holy Trinity, it's about Jonathan Edwards' Theology of Joy. It just came out on Audible. And uh, please forgive me. I'm going to humble brag for just a moment, okay? I, I, I never win anything very often. But today, um, what I want to show you here is that my book is actually number one on the category of theology under the Amazon bestseller. So you can now get a theology of joy, Jonathan Edwards, and eternal happiness in the Holy Trinity on Audible. You can read it in paperback form if you want. It's a long book. Or if you're going on a long trip or you want to listen to nine hours worth of Edwardsian theology of joy and happiness, you can now get it on Audible. Thank you very much to my narrator, David Martin, who did an amazing job on this book. He did my other book, Souls, as well. So I really, really appreciate that. I'm sorry for the humble brag. I just had to do that. Now let's get straight to uh, to the news today. So the PCUSA. Now this is an article from a blog called Juicy Ecumenism. To cite my sources, I saw it first on the Aquila Report, which tends to focus on Presbyterian things. But this author here, his name is Josiah Hasbrook. I cannot, um, con I don't know anything about the author, okay? But the headline here is Presbyterian Church USA considers forcing LGBTQ affirmation. So let's look at the details here. He writes, an increasingly revisionist PC USA will take up legislation at its 226th General Assembly, June 25th to July 4th in Salt Lake City, barring ordination of candidates who are not LGBTQ affirming. So there's the lead. There is the news. Now, let me explain a little bit about how this works, okay? This is called an overture in Presbyterian language. And what happens is once a year or however often our General Assembly uh, gets together, not ours, but theirs, remember PCA, different denomination from the PCUSA, though we function in some ways similarly, uh, what can arise is called an overture, which is essentially a proposal to modify the Constitution. Now, unlike in the United States of America, where the Constitution is hardly ever modified, okay, it's very difficult to do it. In Presby world, the Book of Order, which functions as a Constitution, is updated quite frequently in many different circumstances and for various reasons. Now, the PCUSA's Book of Order has shifted massively to the left over the years, whereas solid denominations like the PCA, my denomination, the OPC, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, the RPCNA, the Reformed Presbyterian Church of North America, the ARP, the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church, I know it's a lot of al alphabet soup there, have maintained their Orthodox biblical confessional identity. The PCUSA has not. It has ever, ever shifted towards the brink of destruction as it moves further to the left. Here is the proposed language. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. The unity of believers in Christ is reflected in the rich diversity of the church's membership. 
In Christ, by the power of the Spirit, God unites persons through baptism regardless of race, ethnicity, age, sex. And now here's the new language in brackets here. Let's just highlight this new language here. Gender, identity, sexual orientation, disability, geography, and on and on it goes. There's no place in the life of the church for discrimination against any person. Now we know which way this is going. This is always and only discrimination in their minds, against leftists, okay? It's the conservatives here who are intentionally being squeezed out of this, and we're going to see why. So if this language becomes constitutional, then here then is the next hurdle or the next uh, difficulty. The author writes a bit about human sexuality and gender here, but this is the next um, important language here. Later on in the Book of Order, it is proposed to change it to this. Standards for ordained service reflect the church's desire to submit joyfully to the Lord Jesus Christ in all aspects of life. Hmm, well, one wonders about that if one is unwilling to repent about sexual sin. The council responsible for ordination and or installation shall examine each candidate's calling, gifts, preparation, and suitability for the responsibility of ordered ministry. The examination shall include, but not be limited to, a determination of the candidate's ability and con commitment to fulfill all requirements as expressed in the constitutional questions for ordination and installation. And, if this language goes through, the principles of participation, representation, and non-discrimination found in the previous change above. You see what's happening here. So first they want to change the definition here to include all kinds of queeristic identities and expressions. And then later on in the Book of Order, they also want to force this upon ordinands. They want all ordinands, again, that would be pastors, that would be elders, that would be deacons, to bow the knee to leftist LGBTQ plus queerism. One wonders what the plus stands for. Well, uh, we can wonder no more. We see all kinds of sexual derivations, all sorts of what the Bible would call fornication or sexual immorality. Uh, perversions of various kinds. These are the various things that the PCUSA is going to try to constitutionalize and then force everyone who is going to be ordained to submit to these particular values. Now, let's talk a little bit about that. So there's the news, and you can read the article again that was on an, a website called Juicy Ecumenism. Let me pop that up for you again one more time just so you can see that source. Again, the author there, Josiah Hasbrook. All right, let's break this down. What does this actually mean? So uh, first of all, it's kind of hard to get an overture through the constitutional process in the PCUSA because there is what is called an ascending overture, and then it has to be ratified by, by all the presbyteries, and then it'll come back to the General Assembly and again in a descending overture. So it's not exactly easy to amend the Constitution. However, the PCUSA has been lining itself up with leftist values, Marxist values, liberal progressive values for so long that veritably all of the representatives that are going to be going to the General Assembly by this point have completely emerged themselves into leftist ideology. So there's very little doubt. So there's very little doubt that something like this is going to pass and then probably pass the presbyteries and then become constitutional. The force of this then is to make sure, to compel, to absolutely, uh, uh, by, by all means necessary, ensure that every other pastor that's going to be ordained in the PCUSA, every other ruling elder, every other deacon from this point forward will be LGBTQ plus queerist affirming, in fact, endorsing. Okay, so that's the way they're going to try to squeeze out the last few conservatives that, were, that are left. Now, some people have assessed the PCUSA as a denomination that is largely moderate, that there are some conservatives on one side, some progressives on the other, but the denomination as a whole is largely moderate. I completely disagree with that assessment. I think the PCUSA, though there are some very, very, very small pockets of resistance left and some conservative uh, corners of the denomination, it is largely progressivistic and leftist. That is not a moderate denomination at all. That is largely progressive. And so I would disagree with some of my friends who would say it's a little bit more moderate. No, I think that the PCUSA actually is in very serious trouble of uh, having already lost the definition of a true church. Now, here's what I mean by that. Going back to the era of the Reformation, the reformers defined the meaning of a true church to have three things, the preaching of the word, 
word of God, the right administration of the sacraments, and the enforcement of godly discipline within the church. And that third one, if the first two haven't already been compromised, and we could talk about that another day, the third one, right discipline according to order, according to godliness, according to sanctification, has been lost so long ago. When is the last time I ask you that the PCUSA has actually disciplined somebody for sexual immorality, for fornication, uh, for any of those kinds of sins, or for some kind of heresy related to orthodox doctrine, or perhaps the breaking or teaching against the Westminster Confession of Faith, man, you've got to go back decades and generations to find any kind of discipline like that in the Peace USA. It has long since lost the third mark of a true church. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to go back into a little bit of history, because what I'm afraid is that some people that are kind of new to this controversy do not know their history. They're not aware of the Kenyan case of 1974. Let me break a little bit of knowledge here to some who are too young to remember this. There was a case called the Wynn Kenyan case. Now, it happened before the merger in 1983 between the northern and the southern branches of the liberal mainline denomination. They eventually merged to become what is today the PCUSA. In the north, it was called the UPCUSA, the United Presbyterian Church, and it was the northern branch of the main line. Now, there was a young man called Wynn Kenyon who was up for ordination in, in our area, the Pittsburgh Presbytery. So this is very, very fresh and very raw wound for us here. In fact, uh, let me go further. His father founded this church, this church that I'm sitting in right now, Gospel Fellowship PCA. Walter Kenyon, his father, is the founder, founder of the church that I'm sitting in right here. So we know this case very well. Wynn Kenyon was up for ordination in the mainline denomination, and he was up for ordination in the Pittsburgh Presbytery of the main line. Here's what happened, okay? There was a controversy, a major controversy that came out in which Wynn Kenyon said that he could not, in good conscience, um, agree with women's ordination. He held the 2,000-year complementarian position that the church should be led by pastors, elders, and deacons of qualified biblical males, as the Bible clearly, clearly teaches in the writings of Paul and other places, okay? So he said he could work with churches uh, that disagreed with him, but he himself could not participate in such an ordination. Well, what happened? Well, the mainline denomination in their main judiciary committee overturned his ordination, banned his ordination, basically said from this point forward, no more biblical complementarians will be ordained in the mainline denomination. Friends, that was back in 1974. These battles have been going on for generations and for decades now. That may strike you as something controversial, but that is why, one of the reasons why, the Peace USA has taken a major, major fall off the cliff into leftism and progressivism. They basically made it impossible for a true biblical conservative, one who adheres to the inspiration, inerrancy, and infallibility of the, infallibility of the scriptures, to be ordained in the Peace USA. So when you cut out any vestige of conservatism in the mainline denomination by forbidding their ordination, of course the mainline church is going to go more and more less le leftist and progressive. A lot of people forgot about the mainline a Kenyan case. They, they forgot their history. They're thinking that these battles haven't been already fought. Listen to me. Um, if you know your history of the mainline Presbyterian denomination, then you should know about the lay committee, the Presbyterian lay committee. You should know about the Presbyterian laymen. They fought for years and for decades over these things. You should know about Presbyterians for, uh, for Renewal, PFR. You should already know about PPL, Presbyterians Pro-Life. They fought these battles so hard, and God bless them. They were courageous, and they were virtuous, and they fought as long and as hard as they possibly could. But listen, at some point, when the denomination forces out conservatives, and here they're going to do it again, but this time they're going to move the marker even more to the left, even further in a progressivist ideology, leftist ideology. Now, it's not just that you can't be ordained if you have a biblical view of, of uh, um, excuse me, you can't be ordained if you do have a biblical view of male and female in terms of ordination. Now they're going to press that bar so far to the left that you have to be LGBTQ plus queerist affirming in order to be ordained. At that point, man, you've just got to ask yourself, how much can you put up with in terms of evil? How much can you besmirch the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the good reputation of our King, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is crucified, resurrected, ascended to the right hand of the Father? How much can you associate yourself with evil without your conscience breaking into a thousand pieces? Uh, listen to me. 
Um, I understand that some of you want to fight these battles again in this generation. And God bless you if you want to do. But let me tell you this. There are three faithful options here when a denomination turns wicked like this. Okay, You can stay and fight like a warrior. And that's one option. Some of you are going to try to do that. You can stay like a secret agent in your leftist denomination and try to just influence people. Little Bible studies here, a small country church is there. That's perhaps a viable option. Or you can leave like a pilgrim and you can establish new churches and new institutions. If you want to argue that the reason that you need to stay and fight is because of your buildings and the wealth and the land and the, the architecture and the cathedrals, I say, let uh, goods and kindred go, uh, this mortal life also, all right? As Martin Luther said, let the buildings go. Let them take everything away from you, but do not let them take your conscience and your faithfulness to the word of God. Why, I ask, why would you fight so hard in a leftist behemoth like the PCUSA to try to make it like a denomination like the PCA, which exists, or the OPC, which exists, or the ARP, which is real, or the RPCNA. The NAPARC denominations already exist. And if you want to fight your whole life against drag queen dragons and uh, drag queen story hour and rainbow this and queerest that, man, I. You know, I guess I can say God bless you to that, but let me tell you this. There is a real beauty and a joy to just going to church every week and hearing expository preaching, knowing that your elders and your pastor affirm the Westminster Confession of Faith and all of its robust, uh, beautiful doctrine, knowing that our examinations for ordination will have nothing of this uh, rainbow leftist queerist ideology. Why would you want to fight against drag queen dragons? when you could be in a church that is peaceful, that is growing, that is doing the work of global missions, that is preaching the word, that is celebrating the sacraments aright, that does have real um, discipline within its, within its body, disciplining such things as fornication and sexuality, immor sexual immorality, disciplining such things as actual heresies. Uh, the PCUSA mainline, they abandoned that a long time ago and they're not going back to it. There probably is never going to be a legitimate heresy case again in the main line, unless that heresy is actually affirming biblical orthodoxy. That's going to be the heresy there in the mainline church. Uh, yes, I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit fired up about this today. Now, some would say that it is fleeing or it is cowardice to leave the main line. Um, let me, let me ask you, brother. Was Walter Kenyon fleeing? Was he a coward? Was Wynne Kenyon fleeing? Was he a coward? Was Jay Gresham Machen a coward? Was Francis Schaeffer a coward? Was, uh, was R.C. Sproul a coward? Was Gerstner a coward when he finally left to? Um, okay. <laughs> um, if you want to call that fleeing or cowardice, I guess you can use any terminology you want. But some of us, some of us think that it's actually taking a biblical stand. I wish people understood how difficult and arduous it has been for those who take the pilgrim option to leave their buildings, to leave their land, to leave the buildings that they built and paid for with their own tithe dollars, only to have the denomination snatch it up. I, I wish people understood the pain that some congregations have gone through to take that faithful biblical stand for orthodoxy. If you call that cowardice, man, I just got to totally disagree with you right there. If you call that running away, I, I have to totally disagree with you right there. Don't be an, Erd, an Erdman. Uh, be a Machen. In a, in a sea of Erdmans, be a Machen. Be a Sproul. Be a Gerstner. Be a Schaefer. It is a time for courage. And uh, it is not a time to be bulldozed over once again by progressivist ideology. That's all I've got to say about that. Sorry for the obvious fury in my voice. Um, don't forget... <laughs> My, my book is now available on Audible. I will post a link to that in the description below if you have any interest whatsoever. Thank you so much for checking into this video and putting up with me today. I do love you lots, and I'll talk to you later.